welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Hannah and I am back and I am sharing with you the adult game board part two of the last video. So an extension of the last video where I shared with you how to create this game board in um, Canva. Um, for those who watched that last video, when you look at this game board, you can see that I kind of tweaked it and I changed the designs in it a little bit, but the concept of the board is still the same. And um, you can create it and customize the board any kind of way that you want. So that's totally up to you guys. But if you want to know how to create um, this game board or a game board um, similar to this, it doesn't have to be for an adult. It doesn't have to be exotic. It can be family friendly, kid friendly, whatever, you know, be creative and just create. So um, what I'm going to do today is share with you how to make the game board at home without having to go to like a printing place such as um, Staples or something like that and have your game board printed out, you know. So this is just um, another, another option that you can do. So first of all, I am using um, Epson 2720 for my printer. So you know, and I'm using um, the Cricut Design Space as you see before you, and you know that those, both of those items are limited to printing dimensions that don't allow you to print out to a certain size, basically. So what I had to do, this um, whole rectangle together is pretty much an eight and a half by 11. And I went in and I split it in half so that it will allow me to um, print. Okay, because it only allow you to print a certain amount of space. I think it's 9.25 by, 9 by 6.75, something like that. So now um, that I have it where I can print this half and I can print this half as well. Um, I also went over here to this gray, this part. This, this The colorful one is going to be a basic um, print and then it's going to cut. This gray part is just basically, it's just gonna cut out the vinyl that I'm gonna use because I am going to use paper and vinyl, you guys. I'm gonna see how this go. I'm trying to make this um, game board small, if that makes sense. So anyway, and behind this, let me pull over to the side. You will see here that I have my um, game instruction cards. Um, which tell you how to play the game. It's pretty simple. That's the front part. And this one over here is the back of the card. And I'm going to use those aluminum um, business cards for my instructions. That's what I'm going to use. You don't have to, you guys. It's just what I'm doing, okay? And then down here, I have... Um, let me see if I can pull them up. Um, let's see, group them right quick. Right here, I have my letters. And these are the fonts that I want to use. These letters are going to go on the wine, um, not the wine glasses, but the shot glasses and on the game pieces that you will be using to navigate on the game board, okay? So now that I've shared with you exactly what's what, we're going to go ahead and cut, cut this stuff out and get it printed in so we can go ahead and um, get to the, the, the juices, the good parts of the video, okay? So I'm going to print these. I'm going to go to make it. Um, normally you would need to mirror this, but I have my settings in my printer where it automatically mirrors. So I don't do it here and I don't do it when it goes to the mat either. So I'm going to click make it and it's going to send it over to the uh, Cricut mat. Let me go ahead and turn my Cricut on. So then you'll see over here, where it's split into two pieces. You have piece number one up here and piece number two down here. So basically you will have two sheets of paper, okay? So it's gonna print out the first sheet and it's gonna print out the second. Um, if you don't have your printer settings um, pre-set so where that it mirrors your image, then now is the time where you wanna click this mirror image and it will flip your um, image for you. So it's reversed and it'll print out right, okay? But um, anyway, I don't need to do that. So let me just put it back like it was. Okay. All right. So now we're going to head on over to continue at the very bottom and send this to our printer. Let me put some paper into my printer. We're going to print these pieces out 
And then I'm gonna go back and print out the business card pieces as well as the game card pieces. And then we will be right back. All right, you guys, so we're back. I have pretty much everything cut out and everything ready to be assembled for our game board um, DIY. What I'm going to be using is this premium card stock. It is um, 110 pounds. Okay. And it's thick. It's not super thick, but it is thick. You can hear how this is one, which is one sheet. You can kind of get an idea of how thick it is, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack them. Cause I want it to kind of think I'm going to put three of them together. I think three should do what I'm pretty much do what I'm looking for. Yeah. So we're going to do three. Three will give me the thickness that I am looking for. And I also want to use, let me see, put this out of the way for what I'm about to do. This fourth sheet is just going to be like a, um, let me see. Actually, I don't want to use that. I'm going to use some regular um, paper to protect my surface so it doesn't get so sticky. So let me go and get that. Okay, so all I've done is just put down some regular plain thin copy paper to protect my surface because I don't have my craft mat over here in the other room. I don't want to go get it. So we're going to use that. Okay, so this is our premium um, cardstock paper that we're going to use. I'm gonna sit that right there. We're also gonna adhere it together. We're gonna bind it together with this self um, spray. You can use another type of glue if you want. I'm gonna use this. Make sure you use it in a well ventilated area. So what I'm gonna do is take the first sheet. You guys pretty much know how to um, Blue paper together so it's really no brand you can also use my podge as well to kind of glue it together i'm just going to use this glue i'm just going to spray kind of get a good spray i don't want to spray too close i don't want to stick it together Make sure you stick it together as good as close as possible. Flip that over. So I'm gonna use this side for the other part. And I won't use so much this time because I think I used too much last time. So I'm gonna get these edges and in the center. And I'm gonna put the third sheet on. Try to lay it down close as I can. I think I'm off just a little bit. That's okay. And then you want to let that dry, okay? Okay, so we've let that dry. And you can see it is pretty thick. So it's kind of like we made our own little poster board. I used three of the premium cardstock um poster or cardstock paper okay so it gives you a good little thickness now we're going to take our vinyl that we cut out this is oracle 651 you can use the mat i only had the shiny uh the glossy in stock over there in my vinyl stock so that's the only one i have right now so i'm going to try to see if this will work so we're going to put this vinyl on top of this paper Okay, and this is gonna be kind of tricky. And I hope I don't mess it up. So you wanna peel back the vinyl. This may take some time, you guys. Just bear with me. And then I'm gonna use my uh, Cricut Little Squeegee 
and I'm going to pull back and I'm going to try to get the air bubbles out as I go back, as I pull it back, okay? Okay, a quick voice over for this section. You want to just make sure that you are continuously squeezing the paper as you pull it to minimize any air bubbles. We don't want any air bubbles. So just keep pulling and keep squeezing until you get to the very end. So we get all the bubbles out. This is how it turned out. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, you could do the same thing for the back. So that the back isn't like this. But what I plan on doing to the back is, um, matter of fact, I can go ahead and do it now. Is brush it with Mod Podge and let it dry. Or actually, I'm going to do it afterwards because it would be better for me to do it afterwards. If I do it, even if I do it. But you could, to protect the back, since it's like paper, you could either do the same thing on the with the vinyl on the back, like you did to the front. You can do that, or you could coat it with a uh, couple of maybe two coats of Mod Podge. Brush it down with a sponge brush. Let it dry between each coat. That would protect it, keep it from getting dirty. Um, yeah, you could probably also use the acrylic Mod Podge sealer to achieve the same um basically the same thing as it would do here you could do that as well or you could apply a gloss finish acrylic gloss finish um coat into it you know to protect the paper so it doesn't get dirty and nasty that's if you want to all right so but for um video purposes i'll do that off camera i won't do it now so we, our next step i'm gonna put this to the side our next step would be to um prepare some of our game pieces. We have our shot glasses and we have our uh, king and queen. This is the Q for the queen and the K for the king. That's what they stand for. We have our piece of, and these are just um, 651 vinyl, you guys, just so you know, this is Oracle 651 in black. And this actually isn't um, Oracle 651. This is um, the metallic. I don't know if you can see it, the gloss, the shimmer on it. This is metallic vinyl here. Okay, so that that one is a little different from this one, and I probably should have used the Oracle 651, but oh well, doesn't really matter that much since this is for myself, and, it, and there's nothing wrong with using that as well. So I'm looking for a um, a cloth. So I'm just gonna use this because you want to make sure that your um, glasses are clean. So I'm just going to use this. Make sure there's no um, smudges on there while I apply the um, letters. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, apply my case. So each one will get a letter on both sides. These smaller ones will be for my trophies and I'll share with you what those look like in a second. I'm just gonna cut off a small piece of this transfer tape. Um, I don't, I use my transfer tape for, um, sorry y'all. Okay, I like to use, my transfer tape a couple of times so that I don't waste it. But um, you can get transfer tape from your local craft store, Cricut or wherever. Okay, so anyway, let's go ahead and transfer these vinyl letters over to the shot glasses. Real simple, apply the transfer tape onto the vinyl, weed it off like this. And then you want to apply exactly wherever you want it. Use your um, little tool to kind of varnish it on there. Peel it off. 
Then like that, just like that. Let me see, I'll give you a background so you can kind of see. Okay, and because it is the Oracle 651, you can hand wash this. I would not put it in the dishwasher, I would not put it in the microwave, but you can hand wash it and it will stay on here. As long as you like try to pick at it and peel it off, it'll stay on there, it won't go anywhere. I'm just gonna use one side. So we're just gonna use one the case for one side. You can do double sides if you want to. I think one side is sufficient. Um, two sides look like it's gonna be a little too busy leaking. So we're just gonna do that one. And I'm gonna do this one for the queen. And there we go. Oh, you want that one? And same thing. Voila. Wine glasses are done. Simple as that. You can, um, if you want to, you can add glitter and all that good stuff down there if you want to. However, I will not be doing that. Okay. So now, um, I have these pieces here that I got from the Dollar Tree out of the um, kids party section. These little trophies I thought would be cute little game pieces for the board, you know, to like move on the board like that. So I have two and we're gonna put these smaller letters on them. So that they can represent um, each player. Since they are the exact same thing in color and all. So I thought it would be cute just to add a cue on both sides. And a, um, what is on my nail? And a, um, one on the other, a K on the other side. There's, uh, but I was saying, as far as about COVID, I just realized that I never did finish what I was saying, that I planned on, the reason why I was doing this is also to make sales because, you know, this is one of my best sellers as well. But um, because there's so much that you can still do at home or you could get a room if you like me and you have kids and you need a little bit more privacy or you just want to, you know, get away um, from the noise and stuff, then you can rent a room and you could play these little cute little games like this you know with your spouse or your significant other um and i think okay so we lost a piece on this one i just realized it that this one is missing the other part of the cue so i'm gonna have to do this one off the other side of this one off camera you guys i did not know that i'm just now seeing that that was missing so i have to go back in and cut that one but that's how it looks like that or we could just do one side but um for these i do want to do both sides so i'm going to go to the queue trying to see okay we're going to go to the k now not the q and do the other one for right now we just do one side so I can go back. And we're going to do the same thing for the king. Oh. I did something. you it tried it so that is the K I don't know if you can see it because of the reflection if I turn it down a little bit no okay anyway so these are super cute like I said they're they're plastic you can get them out of the um thing but little pieces that you can move around okay so you have your 
pieces like this as well. And then I'm gonna hold that to the side because I have to make another one of those um, cues since that one messed up off camera so that I could have on both, both sides, but you don't have to, it's just a personal preference. Just a personal preference. Okay, so now that we have those game pieces out, um, I also stopped at the Dollar Tree and I got this pack of dice. You get 10 dice in here for just a dollar. Um, so I'm gonna add also a dice to the game. And I have a pack of these little burlap bags that you can get um, um, not from the Dollar Tree, but uh, from Hobby Lobby. I got a pack, a pack of these from Hobby Lobby a long time ago, but um, I think it was about a year ago. And I just had some extra ones. So, but you can find these at Hobby Lobby. Sometimes you can get stuff like this from the dollar store. Um, you definitely can find the um, the tool bags like in the waiting section that's like this a little bit smaller though from a dollar store and you can also go to like party city etc etc you know michaels and stuff like that to get these little bags here so these little bags are perfect for me to just put the game pieces in like so see perfect right you could design the outside if you want to i just thought that was a bit much so i wasn't going to do all of that but yeah so we have that now we need to put our board together and put our instructions together. Now, as far as the instruction goes, I'm going to be using these um, metal cards here that I got from a local craft store here in my area. And um, you can get them offline on Amazon as well though. Aluminum, aluminum um, material. And this one has like a shimmer, like a glitter shimmer on there. I don't know if you can, it's picking up. I'm pretty sure it's not. So it's not completely white. It has a, like a silver shimmer in the background, um, glittery, which I like. So we're going to use that to put our instructions on. And I printed out our instructions here. Now you can also just use cardstock or you can just print it out, cut the paper and put it in the box. You don't have to do all this extra stuff. That's just me. Um, just something I wanted to do. So this is going to be the front part and this is going to be the back part because as you can see, you can print on the front part and you can print on the back as well. So what we're going to do, um, also when you're using um, a sublimation printer it, uh, with Cricut, Cricut always have these black registration marks. You need to make sure you cut those out. Um, if you're going to be using um, sublimation because it will that ink will just print off on whatever it is you're printing on or either print off on your machine and mess it up, eventually mess it up. And instead of me, well, this is front back, so I can't do that. So I'm gonna have to cut in between here. I'm gonna have to wipe this down as well. So um, I'm gonna take this card and I'm just gonna simply put this down. This is a sub paper that is on. And I'm just gonna tape it down on there, okay? I'm gonna make sure that it is going right where it needs to be. Right away, you can see that Okay, I'm gonna cut these lines, this line, the block lines. I'm gonna cut that off just because I could see that if I leave it, some of it's gonna get cut off. So let's see, let me try it again before I do. Yeah, see. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off as well. put it down just like that okay so now I'm gonna take my heat transfer tape I'm just gonna tape this down
So then we will uh, put this and press this under the press. And we're going to do that, but we're going to do it all together because I'm also going to press the game board. So I'm going to put that to the side. And we'll uh, take the other side down when it's time. So now for the game board. This is one half of the game board. I left the registration marks on here because I wanted you guys to see that um, just the other side. On here, I've already cut the registration marks off. Um, and if you notice right here, where it would normally be like this here, this little gap here, this little white section here, I made sure to cut it completely off and cut flush, I mean, to cut as flush as I could to this part of the board game because I want to leave this little lip here, this white area here, so that it will overlap um, easily. And um, I can line it up. So I'm going to cut off the registration marks. Just like that. Now I left that white part there because we're going to line it up. See? I'm gonna line it up like that. See how it sits right on top? It kind of like sits on top of that white part. And that helps me line things up nicely. That's just the way that I like to do it or that I'm used to doing it. So if I lay it here, I could kind of puzzle piece it together so that you can't, when I print it, you can't really tell that that's the area that, um, that we cut. All right, so now I have it lined up good enough where I'm gonna take the sides a little. And I do all that just so it can hold together for when I uh, flip it. And I probably put some right there because when you um, do this little technique, it's good to not have any part of it lift up as much as possible. So, yeah. Okay. So now we have our game board that looks like this. And what we're going to do, remember that um poster board that we did with the vinyl okay so all we're gonna do is now take this face down on top of the glossy part of the vinyl and we're going to um glue that together kind of messed up with gluing the um poster boards or not the poster boards but the um card stops together i got off a little bit my measurements was off just slightly so it's slightly irregular just a little bit but nothing that i think will um matter significant significantly significant matter a lot shoot <laughs> i can't say it i can't get the word out my mouth So I'm just gonna tape it, tape it down because we don't want any ghosting and we want it to make sure it stays down when we get printing on it or pressing it. All right, so I got a piece here and I got a piece here. Um, let me put some pieces on the sides as well, real quick. So let me do that as well. And a piece on this side. All right. So now we're going to heat up our press. And i see you guys over there at the press. All right. So our heat press is ready to go. We have it set at 395 degrees for 60 seconds. I got my um, blowout paper, which is just a regular um, copy paper there. 
I have my game board here that I'm going to put right there in the center. And then I'm going to put another piece of blowout paper on top to protect my machine and to catch any um, print print that may go over, okay? So now we're going to press for 60 seconds. And that is just a little too. We need um, medium pressure. There we go. All right, 60 seconds. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see what's popping. Okay, I'm gonna remove the paper. Nothing but just that little line transferred. So I'm hoping that it, hoping that it did what it needed to do. All right, so I'm gonna pull the paper up off of here. I'm gonna take it off of here. We're gonna let that cool, and while we're letting it cool, we're gonna go ahead and um, oh, it's hot. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do our um business card. Well, not a business. It's our business card, but it's our game instructions, and we're gonna put the blowout paper there. We're gonna print press it also for sixty seconds. Okay, so we're gonna get the um. Let that cool off, and then we'll do the other side of it. While that's cooling cool. off, let me share with you the game board. Let's see how that went. Let me cut all that. as I expected. For one thing, I thought it would stay shiny, and it did not. And I don't know if it's because of, maybe I wasn't, or shouldn't have kept it on um, 60 seconds. I don't know. Maybe this is what it's supposed to have to do. I may have to take a, um, a damp paper towel to get the paper off, the, paper, the rest of the paper pieces off. Now, uh, for the game side, that's how that turned out. That turned out real nice. So now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put this side down and press it. Make sure it's the right direction. Okay. I'll put my tape up there. I'm it for 60 seconds. I blow out paper. I'll be right back. All right, so I had to run to the kitchen to um, put water on it, so I removed that part. I got a little bit here where the water still is damp. I just want to share with you. If you put a little bit of water on it, and it'll peel right off. Not a lot. You don't want to soak. You just put a little bit of water in it. And also, you see, I think what I did was overcook it because when I put a little bit of water on it, the um, color was more vivid. The color's more vivid. Let me get the rest of this paper off. All right. So all the paper is off now. I'm going to let this sit up under the um, press and dry. Then I'm going to try to get 
try to figure out a way to um, do the back. I'm probably gonna just spray it. All right, this is the other side of the instruction cards that's on the business little cards that I did. Well, that's the other side. You could promote on one side and let them do the game rules on that side. Okay. Um, you have all of that, but then you'll say, well, how do I package everything? Well, I'm gonna to try to package them in a box like this. This is um one of the little pencil boxes. Now the Dollar Tree have them. This one is particularly from um, um, Michael's Craft Store. Um, it's from Create Creology or something like that. These pencil boxes, whether you get them from Michael's, this is the one from Michael's. Here's one that is from um, the Dollar Tree. This one comes from the Dollar Tree and I've got some other stuff in there. I usually get these all the time when I see them. I just grab a few all the time usually uh, when I think about it because you never know when they come in handy. So, yeah. So, I'm going to put a picture image on the outside. And then I'm going to put my game pieces and stuff in the inside. All right. So, I wanted to uh, make an effort to put a covering on the top of the box. So what I did was print out this design on melon shipping labels or sticker paper. You can use either one, but this is um, melon labels. And so I cut it out so it can go on the top of here. Well, I printed it out for the size. Okay, my dog is in here acting like she's going crazy. So I'm just looking at her like, what is she doing? Anyhow. I could let Cricut, um, the cutter cut this out, but I'm just gonna cut it out real quick. All right, so we're going to, um, we just peel that off and we'll put that right up top. All right. So we have a box like that. And we can put the rest of the stuff in here. Okay. okay. So here's my game board. You can leave your game board just like this um, and do nothing else to it. However, I want my game board to fit in here. In order for me to do that, I need to make it um, where I can fold it when I'm using it and when I'm not using it. So, I'm going to see if I can fold it like this game board, this checkers game board that we have. So I'm gonna show, share it with you so you can get the concept of what I'm trying to do. See how they got it folded out? It's just a, it's more of a square than it is a rectangle, so I don't know if it's gonna work. But you fold it in half, and then you cut up to that middle piece and you should be able to fold it like that when it's all said and done. That's what I'm hoping to do. Hopefully I don't mess it up. If I do, I have to go back to the drawing board or the game board. But it's just trial and error. And also, so you guys know, I um, sprayed a clear coating on the back as well as on the front um, just to help protect it. So, yeah. So let's try to um, fold it and see how that goes. So I'm just bending it. I don't think this is going to work. I want to see. If you don't take risk in crafting, then you never find out new ideas, right? Okay. So this would be the halfway mark for the board. I'm gonna stand up and try to get more pressure on it, on the board.
Okay. All right. So then it was creased this way, and then they had it folded over this way. I can't get it all the way, but get the idea. So now what I'm going to do is cut it from here, the middle up, right in that center piece. Just like that. So, and then when you want to close it, it's easier to close. This definitely, this technique definitely works better with a real board than it does this right here. Because it, it makes the paper wrinkle up a little bit. If you don't mind it, fine. But um, I definitely wouldn't do this to the ones that I sell. I would have to just um, sell them flat and um, find a different type of packaging to put them in. Or a different way to package the items. But for me, it's fine. So I have it folded like that. It now fits in the box. And when you're ready to play it, you can play it. Into game pieces. pieces on there you got your dice and you got your rules so i hope you guys um was able to kind of get an idea of how you can create your own version of um this game and if you did then great and maybe you can like use this as a base as to be more even more creative and do a different type of design or something like that but either way this is the end this is the completed board game and don't forget your little baggie that you put all your contents in and you'll put it in your box real quick let me just go ahead and share that let's package everything up rules in the bag or you could leave it out it's up to you which one you want to do our shot glasses we got our box we're gonna put up our board Put it like this and the um game rules put the game rules down we got our game pieces in here and we'll put our shot glasses in right there on the side and that's it inside it play Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Bye.